Hey YouTube, what's going on? Zero Magnum X here with Kitbits8090. Hello! We're here at the GP. I'm going to try and talk to some pros and stuff tomorrow, but I doubt it. As you can see, it's much bigger than the Force of World event. They have it set up all the way over there. As far as the eye can see. <laughs> uh, plus, like, if they need them, they have tables behind us. So, it's going to be a huge event. I will try to get footage. Uh, we'll get some talk about what we've accomplished overall, like our records and what have you. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. Hey, YouTube. Uh, so, this is the second part of the vlog. I did kind of a sweep and showed everybody how big the event was. Um, so, here's the deal. I'm doing kind of an at-home for the rest of it. It was such a big event that I had so much trouble actually getting coverage. I wanted to get like some mini interviews with some of the pros and other things and I just couldn't do it. Uh, I mean it is a little intimidating to go over to where they're all sitting and they're all in one group and you're like the awkward person they haven't ever really heard of. <laughs> and you're like hi. <laughs> Even just saying hi like they're like kinda like oh who's this person with, with different looks and stuff so I just kind of felt like leaving them alone for the most part. I did get a photo with Brad Nelson. I got to talk a little bit with him, which was really cool, and a few other guys. Uh, I got to say hi to Jerry Thompson, which was really neat. Uh, briefly, though, because it was just such a huge event, and there's barely any time. Uh, so what I'm going to do is a little bit different for this. Uh, I'm going to give a tournament report and like show off the deck I played. Okay, uh, as a Conclusion, we went with uh, two others. Uh, one guy, I think he just like played and dropped or something. He was on green white tokens. The driver for the trip, he uh, he went five and four, so he only needed one more win to make day two. So he was really close. He was also on green white. Kibitz was on black white, and she went three and four. She, like me, eventually was on the can't lose train. And I started off my day in a very interesting situation. I don't know what their stories were. I know um, the guy who drove us there, he beat two pros. So it was kind of cool. And then one of the uh, guys from our local play area took Red Green Ramp and actually managed to uh, beat Reed Duke in two. Uh, so it's pretty cool that for his first GB he got to be one of the, the best pros in the world. Uh with the strategy he really enjoys. So the kind of cool stories for the local player group and player base and all that. Um, anyway, so to me though, uh, I can give you a detailed report of what happened. I didn't start the tournament off uh, very well. Maybe I should have considered doing the uh, grinders Friday. Um, okay, so round one went like this. I sat down versus four color rights. And in game one, we, we both grind it, and as you can see with the duress in the photo, I, I'm on a black-green list. Um, it's Sultai. And we, we grinded it out, and eventually he found his combo piece. In game two, if you understand standard format and magic, he went transgress the mind on turn two, took my best thing. On turn three, he followed it up with a uh, catacomb sifter. On turn four, uh, or at the end phase, I lang or um, I grasped of darkness his catacomb sifter. So, but he still had the token on. So he resolved a uh, turn four reality smasher, uh, which hurts because <laughs> it's a five five with trample haste and hard to deal with. Um, and uh, I mean, like grasp of darkness and ultimate price do nothing versus that card. I needed to find a ruinous path, and I just it did not happen. Um, and then from there on out, I tried to establish entire list trackers and stuff. He just, he managed to just reflect or mage them back to my hand. And from there, the game just fell apart. Like, it was too hard whenever he was backing up with reflect or mage to keep bouncing my cards. Uh, so I had zero defenses. I couldn't get in any ground, and he, he won in two. Uh, the next round, I actually faced a guy that I played Vanguard with, uh, um, who I hadn't seen for a while. I, he looked familiar when we sat down to play, but, you know, I didn't even... Realized it, and whenever I read the name, I was like, "Oh, hey!" I still apologize to him because I felt like an idiot. Um, he was on the blue-red deck, which 
Game one, I didn't pay attention to my life total whenever I went to tap mana and do different things. And like Chandra and a Wandering Fumeral just like did me in. And I just wasn't paying attention to how the game was going because I was kind of tired. I was kind of, I don't want to say I was on tilt from round one, but it was still early and I didn't sleep as optimally as I wanted to because, you know, excitement and everything. Um, so game one, I think I could have played better. Uh, game two, I don't know what my deck does against Fevered Visions besides dies to it. Eventually that two damage just settles in and it gets me. Uh, and that's what happened. He just eventually got me to five. He had a huge turn where he turned it around. Uh, was able to resolve a goggles and then on the following turn was able just to do a uh, fiery temper to my face for six off of goggles and I was at five life and that's just what it, there was to it. Uh, round three I faced an Esper Mill deck we tied. Yeah that's all I'm saying about that that it's just, it was atrocious because all his deck did was grind until it tried to mill you and then whenever you place like duress and transgress into your sideboard or from your sideboard into your deck and you just remove their mill pieces you know you kind of get this flow where you're removing their mill threats but they aren't doing anything else and it came down to where if I had one more land I would have one sorry that's Sophia she's just kind of in her crib trying to look and see what I'm doing um, so I was zero two and one starting off the tournament, which is better than you know, or which is worse than three wins. Like for those guys who have the buys, they just have three wins. It's kind of cool. <sighs> Pardon me. Like I said, long weekend. Um, okay, so I had to win out to make day two. Um, so the next match I think was blue white humans. I'm pretty sure. I was able. <laughs> I, I was able to beat that by just doing languish both games and maintaining board state. And I think in my second game or something, Kalidas hit the board after a bit, and I just took the game from there. So blue white was easy. Um, then I faced like a wonky green white deck that was using Gideon's reproach, and uh, we went to game three, I believe, because he just had Hanner back and Gideon and some other stuff to get there. Uh, which this deck can't really deal with Hainer back that well either. Uh, you just kind of have to play around it. Um, but in game three, he was looking for like a specific hand with his mulligans. He went down to five, found like no land or something or one land hand, and then just like said, Well, this means one of us is going on to play, or we're either going to play or you're going to go on to, to try and do well. And, he would have had to go down to four, so he just conceded game three, and I moved on. Uh, the next game I played was Bant Company, and it 2-0'd me. Uh, game one, he just did what Company does. He got a bunch of value and just spammed the field. I couldn't find the languishes I needed and the removal, and, and nothing was on pace for me. It just My cards did not line up well against his, and he just had the advantage that Green White, or I'm sorry, that uh, Bant gets. And in game two, whenever I did have the answers, he would help. He had like a reflector mage plus a, a well-timed company. And then when I went to languish after I was waiting for him to overextend, he just had the negate. So he just had all the cards he needed to stop me, and that's where I ended up like two, three, and one. And then I dropped. I didn't play it out because there's no point. Even if I would have went uh, like five, three, and one, I would have made day two. You had to have 18 points. They even announced that you had to have 18 points to get into day two. There wasn't any exceptions. You couldn't go in with like 15 or 16 points. Um, so even if I went out, I would have only had 16 points, which wasn't enough. So I dropped. I went to go and play in the GP rebound event. Uh, game one, I faced Black White, and in both games, he just found Westville Abbey and. Orendal, and beat my face in with it to turn the games around and won. So he too owed me. Um, it was really unfortunate. This deck had... I put in a card in my sideboard for this deck. Didn't see it. Uh, I put in Clip Wings for Orendal. And that was all there was to it. Uh, I, I don't know if I cited it in game two because I didn't expect both games to go exactly the same way. I thought, like... 
my duresses and stuff would be stronger to strip him of like the secure the waist and other cards. And that worked out at the beginning until he just found like another secure the waist into Westville Abbey and just got there. So I wish I would have slide like slid in clip wins. Um and maybe I would have done better, but I don't I, I mean it's not an end all to be all because all would have taken was like another Westville Abbey and secure the waist and other things to get there and Soren and stuff. So it was too much for me to deal with, and I was just already kind of like tired. I just played what um, six rounds beforehand, and not feeling too great, uh, not too confident or confident either or with this deck um, in the meta I was in because it was supposed to be like a green white meta. Okay, Sophie, calm down, honey. Um, one moment. There. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. She's just up and once held, and I'll continue. Oops, sorry about that. I'll continue here. Um, okay, so, and then the next, you had to go 3 2 in the rebound event. For the number of players there were to get prizes. Um, so game two. Or round two. I played the Jund version of my deck. Um, and Goblin Dark Dwellers just like outvalued me in both games. I couldn't I couldn't beat D Dwellers. Like he just had so many good loops and so many ways to beat this. He said he loved playing mid-range matchups. Like my deck. And because he normally beat them because of that. So, if you are looking for a way to beat other mid-range games, maybe Jun's what you want. Um, and then game, or round three, oh, and, and that's how it went with both games for me, I apologize. Uh, he just dwellers to victory. In round three, I faced Mono White Humans. I didn't know what I was playing, so I just took like a uh, kind of a regular hand. You know, like, nothing too spectacular. Had a few good cards, and it, you know, could just kind of mitigate most fair games. And then he just went, like, one, turn one, one drop, two, one. Turn two, 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 ones. Turn three, two, two, ones, or whatever. Or, like, Athalia's lieutenant, and I think, like, a two, one. So it just was, like, it was too much for me to even remotely catch up with, and I did not draw a language. So I'm like, let's just go to game two, because I'm just dead. Um, which I was, because I only had two languages in my deck, and I knew I wasn't drawing them. Game two, I found my language, and I destroyed the deck. I just, it, this deck pries on humans and stuff. Game three, I couldn't find a language. I got to find a Kalidus, which didn't keep me in the game long enough. Um, so, this deck is the anti-green-white and humans deck, but it also falters against things like Bant. It falters against decks that are uh, quick to come out of the gate if you don't have an answer for them. So, let me get her in her uh, bouncer and then I'll go over the deck profile. I, like I said, I am a dad, and as I mentioned before, I will have times whenever I'm recording where Sophia wakes up and I can't do much. Um, okay, first I'm going to go over the sideboard, which I know is weird, but I just want to get it out of the way because the main deck will take longer. If anyone's wondering, I have two duress, two transgress, two clip wings, which I added in, but... This was mostly like if I saw Esper Dragons and stuff. It wasn't for Orndal, just doubled up on Orndal. But, like I said, if I didn't see it, it was kind of worthless. It was more so for like the Flyer stack and for Orndal. So I didn't have to like, you know, actively target Thunderbreak to deal myself more damage or whatever. Um, it was a way around that deck, it, which was my logic. Uh, is to help, like, whenever I was exhausted in this card against that Languish. So two language, one plague, one bellower, which helped out. Um, I did play it, but it didn't do a whole lot, unfortunately. I just think I had the wrong matchups for it. Um, Dark Petition, Obnixilis, Serena's Path, Infinite Obliteration, and a Season's Pass. 
So that's a, that's the sideboard. Uh, main deck is four oath, four advocate, two den protector, four tireless tracker, two Nissa, two Kalidas, two get rog, two Salamgar. That's the creature package. Uh, the rest of the spells, so three ultimate price, three ruinous path, two grasp of darkness, two languish, one dark petition, one obnixilis, and then land base is pretty pretty straightforward. It was four quagmire, four wastes, or Atlanta war wastes if you're listening and listen, not um, watching it, two Yava Maya coast, one lumbering falls, four evolving wilds. Then six swamp, four forest, and one island. All right. Um, so that was kind of my the rest of this log and uh, tournament report. Uh, sorry for the interruptions from the tyke, but you know she's seven months, so she doesn't know much better. Um, cool things about the weekend, though. I did get these neat clue tokens. They had. Uh, I also got this. Playmat, or not playmat, um, sorry, mouse pad. Let's uh, Black Lotus as if it was like the what it would look like today, or it's evolved form, or so on. I think from uh, Christopher Rush. And uh, that is overall the report. Uh, I don't know if I care for this deck uh, as much as I thought I did. It was super fun uh, to play. But the problem is, is it, it's it's suited for a format that is slower and grindier, and a format that doesn't have a bunch of indestructible creatures. Uh, and it would be an awesome control deck in that format. But as the format stands now, it's a little, little slow. So, anyway, you, uh, YouTube, thank you for listening to my ramble and in my vlog. I, I hope you enjoyed this. Oh, um, I guess I could. Show you guys this. I got a uh, some art prints as well. Misty Rainforest and then Dig Through Time. And they're they're signed, I believe, by the there we go. By the artist, which is really cool. He did the expeditions and stuff. It's neat to meet him. He's a cool guy to talk with for sure. Uh so it's uh Ryan What's his name? Ryan Lee, I think. Yeah, Ryan Lee. So he was cool to meet. And uh, overall, I had a pretty fun time. Uh, hopefully, I do better next year. And then hopefully, I can find a better deck for standard. I don't like green white at all. So I just want to find something that isn't green white that I could enjoy. Uh, but you know, with the uh, the previews of and everything coming out for Eldritch Moon, Eldritch, Eldritch, I don't know how you say the word. I've heard it pronounced different uh, ways hopefully with all the things coming out in that I'll be able to find some cool strategy and actually start doing some neat deck profiles and everything uh, the reason I've been heavy on magic stuff lately is because I dislike most of what's going on in standard and modern I do I mean I've just gotten a Heary built uh, but they're all kind of the same deck for that strategy and I'm working on legacy miracles so we'll see. Anyway, uh, take care YouTube and have a good one. Sorry that this was long. Most of it was here in the room, but you know, I had to go over the rest of it. So this tournament report, deck profile, and cool stuff that happened. All right. Peace YouTube and have a good one. Later.